Out of the millions of high school football players, only one-tenth of one percent of kids that play football in high school score a Division 1A football scholarship. And I was fortunate enough to do that. But there's a story behind it. <laughs> um, I remember as I, uh, as I was sort of bouncing from place to place to work to school and trying the best that I could to hide that from my friends and, and teachers, um, I had someone pop up in my life that made all the difference. I met Brian sweeping the floor of my great uncle's um, sports store, and Brian became a very good friend. He would, he would pick me up on Wednesday nights and Sundays and play hoops with me at the YMCA and, uh, and just became a really, really dear friend of mine. The thing about Brian that was amazing is that he was a high school All-American. Uh, he was recruited all over the country. He settled on a smaller school because he didn't have very good grades and uh, was starting as a freshman, playing really, really well at this university and was getting letters from like the uh, professional football teams and, and everything was going wonderful for him. And then because of his grades and some of his behavior, he flunked out of school and he was trying to rebuild his life again at the same, at the same time that I met him. Well, he did a lot of things for me. Um, just being my friend, reaching across uh, the barriers that you know, homeless kids have and, and those kind of environments. He just had faith in me and he tried to, he, he helped me get closer to my vision. And I'll never, never forget him for that and I will always be grateful for it. And as a result, things continued to go well for me in high school. I, I got straight A's and um, was also getting recruited at colleges to play football all over the country. But I wanted to go to a school that tight ends really excelled at and had the best chances of going to the NFL. And at the time, I played tight end on offense and linebacker on defense. And BYU had one of the best offenses in the country. And they recruited me and offered me to play, offered me a scholarship to play there. And I told basically everyone else that I wasn't going to go, you know, anywhere but there because I just liked it. It was a wholesome environment. I thought it would be a positive kind of thing. And uh, near the end of my senior year, when decisions had to be made and uh, final, um, final offers were given, BYU never offered me a scholarship, and, uh, which left me sort of holding the bag. I didn't know what to do. Um, but fortunately, I'd gotten good grades, and, and I had applied for some academic scholarships. And so I said, I'll just go and walk on. So that's what I decided to do. Finished high school, you know, um, was all state in football, all state in track, high honors, and had a lot of accolades and did, re did really well despite my um, unfortunate circumstance at home. And what I did was I packed my little orange duffel bag and I moved to Provo, Utah after I graduated. And I worked out with the, the football team all summer and was very excited about it, was making great progress, um, and came home to Las Vegas to play in a high school all-star game. Well, as I did that, because I'd worked so hard in the summer, um, I was really making a difference. And uh, as we were practicing getting ready for this all-star game, I was starting both ways, and just really killing it on the field. And I'll never forget one practice about five or six days before the game. I was doing a, a drill, and a kid by the name of Nick Bruno from our rival high school dove into my knee, and I heard this loud pop. And I just was it was excruciatingly painful and I fell down to the ground and I'll never forget my knee was pointing up and my my foot was sort of flopped over like this and I'm like that is not good you know and and I'm like once again my dreams were completely crushed I blew my knee out and I didn't had no idea what to do so after I hurt my knee um, Dr. Andrew Welsh examined it and gave me the uh, prognosis and we you know we repaired my knee and I did the best I could to get that healed as fast as I could, but I was basically forced with the decision not to play football or start school. So I, w I got a job at the casino and I just started focusing on my knee. Um, and I went to work again. You know, that principle my mom taught me, hard work always pays off. Well, in this particular case, I went back to work, would work with uh, Dave Denham, the athletic trainer, and Dr. Welsh's facility to get my knee better. And I also got a job um, working on the strip. UNLV was very well connected um, and they were interested in me playing football there so they got me a job as a teamster on the strip making a lot of money. And I figured it out that I could make a lot of money you know being a teamster and doing sort of homework and and make more money than on scholarship and and through a series of a couple of um, events I decided that you know maybe I should just go to UNLV. I have no other choice you know. UNLV is the best place to go given that given my circumstances. 
At the time, UNLV didn't have a lot of accredited majors. You know, it was known for one thing and one thing only, and that was hotel administration. And it wasn't like the academic powerhouse um, that you had hoped to go to. And and my my doctor, Andrew Welsh, found out that I was going to go to UNLV, and he, he, he set up a meeting with me, and he said, Sam, why are you going to UNLV? And I said, well, it's the only option I have. I said, I don't have any other option. And he said, that's not true. He goes, I know coaches all over the country, and we can get you uh, looked at again. And, and, and we've seen, Dave and I have seen your workouts and the way you're, you're passionate, and we've heard you're a good student. You know, let's help you. And again, Dave and Dr. Welsh reached out to help me, reached across and helped me, just that one person. And um, we wrote a, he said, I want you to write down all your, all your honors on a, on, a, on a sheet and then I'll write a letter and then let's just send it out to all the universities that were recruiting you. And I said, okay. So, um, you know, we picked 30 schools, you know, Georgia, Georgia Tech, Texas, Texas A&M, Texas Tech, Arkansas. We picked some schools in the, in the, in the West, you know, Oregon, those kind of things. Sent 30 letters out with some game films and not many of them were interested. Um, about a handful were interested. And most of them just declined any kind of offer to give me a scholarship. And I'll never forget this phone call I got from a guy by the name of Ken Blair. And Ken Blair was from Georgia Tech. And he gets on the phone. He says, hey, is this Sam Bracken? I said, yeah. He said, hey, this is Ken Blair. I'm from Georgia. Um, and I coach here at Georgia Tech. And we like your game films. And, and uh, we want you to come out here and and look at the school, and I was just completely dumbfounded. I was like, I was ready for the flush letter, but you know. So um, I get on a plane, it's probably the second time I've ever been on an airplane in my life. We fly to Georgia, meet on the campus of Georgia Tech with Ken Blair, gives me the big tour. And as I met with Coach Curry, I was so very impressed. He had, uh, you know, three Super Bowl rings, was coached by John Shula and Vince Lombardi, was the president of the NFL Players Association, was a captivating, very powerful man. And as he got to know me and I got to know him, in our conversation, he looked at me and straight in the eye and he said, Sam, uh, we like what we see. We, we checked your knee out. It seems to be fine. He said, I'm going to ask you a question. He said, why should we give you a football scholarship? And I looked at him and I said, Coach Curry, no one wants it more, no one deserves it more than I do. And I said, I promise you, you will not regret giving me a scholarship. I will make it work. I'll be the best I can be. And he uh, sort of got a smile on his face and put out his hand. He said, that's good enough for me. You got a scholarship. And I'll never forget how that felt. My whole future was changed by that one act of kindness, that one extension, reaching across the country and extending a scholarship to me, just one kid. I remember going home on the plane, looking at my national letter of intent and the scholarship, and I just could not believe it. I got home, I put everything I owned in that orange duffel bag, a couple pairs of jeans, some t-shirts, some socks, and some underwear, and I packed that bag with all of my hopes and dreams and I quickly left Las Vegas, never wanting to return. As I got to Tech, my freshman year was awesome. I managed to secure a place on the football team. I was second string behind Lance Skelton, who was an all-conference outside linebacker. Um, I was playing in a lot of the games. Matter of fact, our first game, we played Alabama. They were ranked number one in the nation. We beat them. It was huge. And then we lost every single game after that. <laughs> But I played in a lot of the games and uh, played a lot. And at the end of my freshman year, I was named to the ACC Rookie of the Year team. It was a big deal. And I'll never forget meeting with Coach Curry and him saying to me, you know, Sam, we're so glad you came. And I said, not half as glad as I am. He said, the future is so bright for you. Um, barring injury, um, we see you as a top NFL draft pick and an All-American here at Georgia Tech. And I can't tell you how much joy I had in my heart at that time. All my hard work had finally paid off. 